Joshua chapter 13, verse 1. Amen. Now Joshua was old. And what? Stricken in years. And Pastor Chinedu said, huh? Archangel said, the Lord himself. The Lord said unto him, you are old. Hey, 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 hey. The Lord knew when you are, listen, he know when your time don't pass. That's why the book of Ecclesiastes, he warned us, he says, serve the Lord in the days of your youth. The days are coming. You are useless. Talk to me. Hey, hey, hey. Joshua, you are now old and stricken in years, and there remaineth yet a very much land to be possessed. Go to Joshua chapter 1. Let them understand verse 13. Why is God talking this way? Why was God talking this way? Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead, and now, there, and now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, thou and the people, unto which, un, I mean, and thou and these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even the children of Israel. Every place the soul of your feet shall tread upon. I will what? I, we, I have given you. He didn't say, I have, I will give you. I have given you. Before you even get there, I have given you. Everywhere the sole of your feet shall tread upon. Ah. What is simply saying, Joshua, you are limitless. Just be going. But you see, Joshua. Bible said, and, okay, go to verse 4. Verse 4. And from the wilderness of Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, he said, to the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea, towards the going down of the sun. My God, the territory is massive. He said, there shall, listen to me, sir. He said, Joshua, as long as you are walking, there shall not be any man who will be able to stand. In other words, uh, Joshua, don't be concerned about your adversary. They are not, they are not, if, they are not factors. There will be no man who will be able to stand before you as I was with Moses. You know why I was telling him I was with Moses? Your son said, he said, if Pharaoh couldn't stop Moses, that's how I'm going to be with you. But you see, with all these promises, God, many years later, walked back to Joshua and said, now you are old. You are stricken in years. You can no longer do anything. He said, but the land is still vast. That you didn't cover. Are you still here with me? Yeah. We started looking at the topic. Dare to break new grounds. Dare to break what? New grounds. You are big. Listen to me sir. You are much more than you can see. You are much more. Than you can ever see. The you that God is seeing. Is bigger than what you can ever comprehend. Is bigger than what you can ever imagine. The you that God can see. Therefore, it's necessary that you pay attention to the you that God sees. Are you willing? Are you ready? Are you prepared? Is your mind made up to take comfort? I said from the beginning, I said, permit me to tell you that God is not all you need to become who he has created you to be. You need much more than God. Are you from saying? Listen to me. It's God's responsibility to give you the land. It's your responsibility to take it. Are you here with me? Are you here with me? I said that this series is particularly for those who are no longer comfortable with where they are. Because let me say this to you, sir. It's very, very easy. Very easy to settle in your comfort zone. You know, you just have one Tokumbo car that takes you to work. It has a condition. Thank God it has a condition. It takes you to work. Even your friends wave you down on the road to pick them up. Ah, thank God. <laughs> it's good. But listen, it's good to be grateful. 
It's good to be grateful. It's good to be a person of gratitude. But listen to me, sir. It's evil to be less than what God has created you to be. It's witchcraft against yourself to be less than anything that God has created you to be. So I said, if I'm going to break new grounds, if I'm going to take new territories, because listen to me, sir, you are not bigger than who you are until you take new territories. It's possible to take new grounds. But how do I go about it? God has given me new grounds. How do I take them? Number one, I say don't go in with what? Assumption and what? And presumption. And on Wednesday, I spent time telling you why assumption and presumption is very dangerous. Do you remember that? I said that number one, it is because they do what? They becloud you from what? From the truth. Assumption and presumption stops you from seeing things the way they really are. They stop you from seeing the true picture of every matter. I said number two is that it what? It hinders you from what? Making right decision and taking right actions. I said number three, it does what? It weakens your faith and what? Affects your persuasion. It weakens your faith, it affects your persuasion. I said number four, it does what? is a time waster presumption and assumption waste your time waste your resources make you invest in wrong relationships you are investing in relationship assuming that that person is the uh, your son say yes sir not knowing amen somebody uh-huh uh-huh is a, is a waster. He wastes time, resources, he wastes investment, he wastes energy, he wastes so much. I said, it is also what? It breeds what? Arrogance. It breeds arrogance. It breeds arrogance. And I said, it does what again? It reveals impudence. It shows that you are unwise. When you act in assumption and presumption, it shows that you are unwise. It reveals your lack of wisdom. Even if you start revealing it now, it's a matter of time. It's going to reveal it. What was the next one I said? It makes you what? Take serious things for what? For granted. And do what? And throw caution to wind. It makes you throw caution to wind. When you read those scriptures I gave you, one of them was where Korah, Biram, and the rest of them confronted Moses. Waiting, self. Ah, waiting. Your own self, they're too much. How many of us have ever fought fight that is not your own? Eh? Akoba Daba. Oloma Jari. Have you seen where you are, you are fighting and the person you are fighting for sneaked away? The way you answer yes, it has happened. <laughs> Amen, somebody. There are fights. Listen, that are not worth it. Don't fight them. Number two. Number two. Do a proper diligence. A proper due diligence, rather. Do a proper due diligence. If you're going to take a new territory... Please take your time to do a proper due diligence of that territory you are about to take. What's due diligence? Number one, it is, it is a reasonable step taken by a person to avoid thoughts or offense. It is a comprehensive appraisal of a business undertaking by a prospective buyer. It is a comprehensive appraiser undertaken by a business prospective buyer. 
especially to establish its assets and its liability and evaluate its commercial potential. It is necessary for a buyer to confirm the accuracy of the claim of a seller. Accountants will understand this one very well. Amen? Accountants will understand what due diligence is. You see, due diligence is what a company does when they want to acquire another company. They go there, they send in people, pay them to go carry out a proper research and analysis, forensic, whatever. What does these people have? Those things they presented to us that they have, is it true? Do they have those buildings? Do they have that capital in, their, in, their, in the bank? Do they have these personnel? Do they have this number of vehicles? Do they have these things that they have stipulated in their uh, proposal, whatever, that they have? Do they have it? And then when the team goes in, the team examine all of them and confirm that they have these things. That's what is called due diligence. When you want to take over, when you want to break into a new territory, don't just assume. Please go and do a proper due diligence. Do a proper due diligence. You want to start up that business. Please, I have said it before. I want to say it again. Don't go start a business because your next door neighbor is selling and therefore you think that that business is the reigning business you want to sell. Your next door neighbor is cooking food and everybody is rushing her food. You start cooking. What's her recipe? Are you listening to what I'm saying, sir? And then you get up. You didn't do due diligence. You don't know how she cooks. You don't know what she does. You go and rent a flat. Put cotton. Put AC. You will soon sell all of them. It's a matter of time. Go and do a proper due diligence. Due diligence is not the absence of faith. Due diligence is not a proof that you don't have faith. Due diligence is a sign that you are wise. As a matter of fact, God wants you to do due diligence. In Numbers chapter 13, if you read from verse 1, look, people it up. Now the Lord spe who spake? The Lord spake to Moses, saying, God, send men that they may go and search out the land of Cana, which I do give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their father shall ye send men, every one a ruler among them. Wait. Who was talking here? Go to verse 17. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Cana, and he said unto them, Get thee up this way southward, and go up into the mountain, and see the land, what it, are you here? What it was, is. And the people that does what? That dwell therein. Whether they be strong or weak, few or many. And what land it is that they dwell in. Whether it be a good land or a bad land. Whether it be what, what city they, that, what? That they dwell therein. Whether it be tent or a strong war, what kind of land it is, whether it be what, a fat or a lean, whether it be what, wood, whether there be wood therein or not, whether ye be what, be you of good courage, bring what, the fruit of the land, and what, now. Who sent Moses to go do all this? Huh? So God has become a liar. Who, who is giving them the land? Who told them that the land is a land that flows with milk and honey? Who sent them to go and see whether what he said is true? The business is not a bad business. The problem is that you didn't do due diligence. You are losing money now. 
You're blaming everybody. Did you ask how that business is? Did you learn the business well? You they sell clothes. You they sell sweater for, for dry season. You they sell sweater for hot weather. You know, say the, thing, the design fine. The design fine. Sweater and sweater. It doesn't matter how fine the design is. Nobody will buy it in dry season. Come on, tell me you love me. I love you too. You see, sometimes, me, I don't even know why I talk this way. It, sometimes when I get home and listen to myself, I say, it looks as if you were hard on these people, though. I'm sorry, but I have to tell you the truth. What kind of land is it? The people there, how do they behave? Are you still here with me? God sent Moses. He said, Moses, you know everything? I said, Lord, what were you trying? He said, I was trying to teach them. He said, that I'm not a liar. I don't know how to lie. What I told them about the land is true. But they must go. You see, let me tell you what it does to you. Due diligence is the one factor that builds your faith. There is nothing that encourages you than you know what you're doing. Are you following what I'm saying, sir? How many of you have written an exam in your life? When you pick up the question paper and know that you know the answer, what do you do? You smile. You relax. There's your composure changes. You bend like this and show the invigilator, I'm in charge. <laughs> That's what due diligence does. It is high time, believers, we stopped this trial and error thing we are doing. It makes it look as if God fails us. But it's our stupidity that is failing us. Am I communicating here, sir? Do you know that after God spoke to Joshua, you remember then that in verse 18, the children of Joseph came and said, we, we, the, the, the land, we are two tribes, you gave us one, one portion, what is the meaning of that? And he said, you're great guys. Go take the place. But notice, I still notice that he didn't just send them like that. Go to verse chapter 18 of Joshua. Chapter 18. He said, and the whole congregation of the children of Israel assembled themselves to at Shiloh. And set up a tabernacle of the congregation there. And the land was subdued before them. And then, and there remained among the children of Israel seven tribes that had not received inheritance. You know, a lot of us think Joshua succeeded. God said, take them, divide the inheritance for them. Seven, as at this time, it is in chapter 13, God told him, you are old now. The job has not been done. In chapter 18, the Bible is telling us about seven, that is, out of the twelve, it's only five. You're, you're happy now. Ah, I graduated, I graduated. Some of you seated here now, what God wants you to be is a PhD holder. You are celebrating first degree. Are you still here? And then, go on to the next verse 3. And Joshua said unto them, the children of Israel, How long are you going to slack? How long are you going to what? Slack. Go! How long are you going to slack to go and possess what? The land which the Lord has what? Had given to your fathers. How long? Give out among you how many? Three men each tribe. And I will send them and they will arise and go what? And go through the land. They are going to do survey again. They are going to, because, listen to me, sir. The fact that you did survey three years ago does not mean it's still the same. The Lord said, I wish that thou mayest what? I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospering. What, what's that? All round prosperity. Prospering in your mind, prospering in your body, prospering in your, in your finance, prospering in all ramifications. That's God's desire for you. All generation Christian, they understand watch and pray. What this generation understands is pray and close eyes. Have you noticed in the Bible that there's no place in the Bible the Bible says you close your eyes when you're praying? Our fathers taught you to close our eyes so that we can avoid distraction. Jesus said, watch and pray. You've been praying for open doors now. Many of you have been, you have money to import. You don't know what to import. Now, 
43 items have been lifted. Your mates are already rushing to collect uh, from A. Eh? You don't know anything. Verse with me. I want you to be angry with me oh, over these things I'm saying. It's I'm sending them to go spy the land. Verse 8. Verse 8 and 9. Verse 8 and 9. He said, and the men arose and did what? And went their way as Joshua has what? Charged them and went to describe what? The land saying, go to walk through the land and describe it and come again to me that I may what? Cast lot before the Lord in Shiloh. I want to know what kind of land. And the people went and passed through the land and what? Describe it what? By city on, into what? Seven parts in the book and came again. This time around, you see, civilization has increased. When they went before, they didn't go with book. This time around, they went with book and draw the land. They did survey. Survey didn't start in the university. It started in the Bible. They surveyed the land, drew the land, surveyed it, and came back and said, Joshua, I'm be this. So he didn't have to start walking around the land. He just picked the paper. Divide it. May the Lord give you sense. Somebody said, due diligence. Do it. Every accountant knows that there are different kinds of diligence, due diligence. Bishop, am I right? Uh -huh. I know the accountant too. But I know. Because as you see me so, for the past 18 years, I've been doing due diligence. Did I marry accountant? I became accountant. Praise God. I say praise God. That's why you must not marry Olodo. Get angry. See, get angry. If you didn't go, your wife must go. If your wife didn't go, you must go. I said I wanted to share you pipe of fair. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying, sir? You must. Please, you must. Go do due diligence. Don't just rush. Number one, when you want to do due diligence, you want to buy a company, you want to, first of all, do, there's something we call administrative due diligence. You can just write administrative DD. Administrative DD has to do with, is related to the ad admin. For instance, what are their facilities? What about their occupancy rates? Has he expired? What number of branches or stations do they have? What is that I want to buy over First Bank? I must know how many branches do they have? Where do they have them? Are some rent? Is it their property? That's administrative. Financial DD. They seek to confirm whether their financial reports presented in the... In the Confidentiality information memorandum is or are accurate. They say we have 10 million. Is it true? Are they owing? They say we have uh, 20 cartons of so 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 and so product. Is it have they paid for it or do they carry it on credit? Do due diligence on that. Then there's something called assets DD, asset due diligence. This deals with the confirmation of fixed assets and location. We have a branch in, Bar in Bar Bar Bariga. We have another one in uh, Okafa. We have another one in Are they true? Is it their own? That's assets DD. Human resources DD. The number of employees they have. We have 20 employees in, that, in this uh, branch. We have 20 in this branch. We have 10. Is it true? Do they have them? What is their position? What is their salary? Are you here with me? Because you can go and buy, and then what they are paying them is too, too, and you can't afford to pay them. Are you still here with me? Are you still here with me? Yes. Do human resources DD. What's the agreement between the employee and the employer? When are they supposed to be retired? What is their entitlement when they retire? Find out all these things. Then, there's something we call environmental DD. This deal with environmental rules that governs companies, their mode of operation in that vicinity. 
Are you following what I'm saying, sir? I am buying company in India now. What license am I supposed to acquire? In that state of India, what am I supposed to get? What do I need to be able to operate? Are you following what I'm saying, sir? If you don't do it, sooner or later, you will face the consequences. Are you following what I'm saying, sir? You are going to do matter to get shop. Please find out how do they operate there. What levy do they pay? When do they close? You are going to Ladikpo to get shop. Are you aware that Ladikpo closed 5 o'clock? Everybody is already closing shop. Are you aware that there is a time they open shop? You can't just go there 6 o'clock and say, open my shop for me. No. There is a time they open the gate. And when they open, until that time, nobody opens gate for you. Doesn't matter how much you have. Find out what, how those things work before you move into it. Am I communicating here, sir? And then go to, there's what we also call tax DD. This has to do with, as you know what the name is now, tax. Reviewing of tax of the company that you're about to acquire. How do they pay? Listen to me, sir. In Nigeria, everybody pay tax. All these shops on the street pay tax. You see all those levies they come to collect? Now tax you they pay. So if I'm starting a small scale business, what is obtainable? How do I pay my tax? Find them that out. Are you still here with me? Are you still here with me? Intellectual property DD. If it's an organization like a publishing firm, like Macmillions, uh, what name them? And the rest of them. Am I communicating here, sir? Who, who is that? Who owns the property? Find out intellectual property. Do they have something like that? Is it their own? Are they the publishers? If I buy over this company, do I have the right to own it? Are you still here with me? Find out such things. Then legal DD. This deal with uh, assessing and reviewing their legal documents. E.g. Memorandum of Article of Association and the rest of them. Find out. Find out how those things work. Are you here with me? Do a due diligence on that. Then customer DD. There's something called customer DD. Who is their customer? Who is their top customer? Are you here with me, sir? What is their current credit policy? What's their current credit policy? Who is their highest bidder? Who buys more? Which area do they supply more? Find out these things. Otherwise, you can buy a company and then you have no customer. It's over a period of time. You shut down. Because they sold the company for you. They didn't sell their customers. Find out who are, as you are, before you even pay for the company, who are their customers? How much do they sell in a month? How much do they make in a month? Who, which area buys more? You know there are some products, they sell more in Bariga. I know you don't know. Such products, you not know, they sell for Banana Island. Find out who are their customers. And then finally, strategic Fit DD. Strategic what? Fit DD. This company I'm about to acquire now. How does it fit into the company I already have? Huh? Talk to me. You are already running a hospital. And then you go and acquire a mechanic workshop. Please sit down. <laughs> Yourself, yes, sir. You must. Does this mechanic business fit into our hospital business? So you must do the diligent of strategic fitting. Does it fit into our business? But you see, if I acquire a company that imports medical facilities, equipment, you understand, sir? sir? Uh -huh. You see, it's beginning to match. Are you here with me? Talk to me now. You see why you read some things in the school and want to start up this kind of business and you're frustrated. So when I'm telling you what I'm telling you, I'm teaching this passionately out of experience. Do proper due diligence. Don't enter it because you tried this one, it worked, and you think this one is going to work that way. No, they don't work the same way. Did you get something today?